Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Vinnie Patria, and I work at UC San Diego. And for the next uh, 45 minutes, I'd like to talk to you about spine trauma. We're going to focus on the lower thoracic spine and the lumbar spine. So this is a very common uh, area of injury that we encounter in our clinical practice. And the reason we see so many injuries around this area are twofold. One, it's the most common site of uh, injuries in patients who have osteoporosis, so fragility fractures are seen. But we also see a lot of purely traumatic injuries at the lower thoracic and lumbar spine. This area is quite mobile. And unlike the upper thoracic spine, where the ribs form a rigid ring with the sternum and are relatively protected, the ribs are floating at the thoracolumbar lumbar junction and we're transitioning from kyphosis to lordosis in this zone. So the facet joints are changing the orientation and there's a lot of movement that takes place. The lower lumbar spine has less injuries. It's relatively protected. So I'm just going to highlight a few of the unique injuries that take place in that region. And I'd also like to um, introduce or review for you uh, the uh, thoracal lumbar injury classification system, the TWIC system that is widely used for classifying these injuries uh, currently. Now, historically, it's worthwhile to realize that there have been a number of classification systems applied to this region, starting with Holdsworth, uh, who uh, developed his classification system in the 60s. It was quite popular during the 70s where the spine was divided into two columns, an anterior column and a posterior column. And Holdsworth is really the first person to try to classify injuries into various types. And he classified them, as you can see listed here, into compression, burst, extension, shear, and fracture dislocation. And you'll see that the current classification systems are, are quite similar in terms of how they break down their uh, the um, injuries in this uh, region. During the 80s and 90s, at least in the United States, the Denis classification was widely used. And uh, the main difference between this and the Holdsworth classification was that Denis introduced this concept of the middle column, which he considered the most important for providing spinal stability. The middle column consisted of the posterior portion of the vertebral body, the posterior longitudinal ligament, and the annulus. And he really thought that this had to be injured in order for the spine to become unstable. So in the uh, Denis classification, it's really this that becomes critical. And other than compression fractures limited to the front two-thirds or so of the vertebral body, he thought that those all had the potential for either mechanical or neurologic uh, instability. 